Hey guys, so I'm here at uh, Residenz Schloss, also known as Dresden Castle. And there's quite a few museums in Dresden, uh, but one of them is sort of like sealed off. They make a big show out of it. Uh, it's called the Historic Green Vault. Uh, there's two of them. There's a new one and the historic one. Only, only the historic one is the one that's sort of, you know, got a whole song and dance to it. The reason for that is it because it's because it's got emeralds, rubies, sapphires, and amber. Very beautiful designs, but that's not what's important about that museum. Uh, I, I could not care less about a bunch of stones that any anyone these days can buy. What's in that museum and what they don't advertise is uh, a ring of Martin Luther, the Martin Luther, the German Protestant um, reformer, uh, and also a cup. It's, a, it's an ordinary glass cup, but somebody you know basically took it um, and uh, made it into a goblet. Uh, but that's the cup that Martin Luther drank from and it's in that museum back there and they don't advertise any of it. Uh, so those are two pieces. What's really interesting about um, the ring is that Martin Luther designed it himself and he, you know, usually on, a, on, a, on an emblem or insignia, you can put two, three, four things. So of all the things that Martin Luther could have put on his ring, um, he, put, he chose a rose, um, a cross, and a heart. Now that's that's probably one of the nice, the, the most interesting things I can I've seen in any of these museums. Um, and again, they're not really advertising it, and that tells you a lot about human nature. Um, and w about human nature, let me get out of here. Uh, this is the, the problem with Dresden is all these buildings are basically new, right? The whole city was bombed in 1945, um, and so they may have been able to fix some of it, uh, but for the most part, you're not going to get anything really old. Um, except for what I just saw in that museum. Um, and so uh, it's, it's something you want to think about is even today, you know, the question if you're a country or a leader is what are you going to leave behind? And what we've left behind over the last 500 years, um, you know, is essentially a legacy of shiny things. Uh, and you can see that the difference between this museum and the Germans uh, and a lot of other museums is that the they uh, utilized more unique things, like they have ostrich eggs, uh, and they made that into a beer mug. Um, I mean, it's not, you know, <laughs> it's not that, it's pretty, um, but you can see that a lot of that's what's happened in the past is that um, the energy and the money has always been consolidated um, into a, a lot of leaders that choose to use that money uh, not necessarily on welfare, but basically on shiny things. And so if you're making a country, if you're trying to trying to develop a country, if you're trying to accept money within a country, the idea really is what are you going to leave behind? And there's obviously a lot of merit in having something that's shiny. Uh, it's really beautiful. Um, but it, as we move more and more into a society um, where you can buy most of the shiny things uh, that you want, or you can even replicate it, uh, fairly easily, so it looks almost the same. The question is, are we going to be able to move into a post-materialistic society, uh, which is another way of saying uh, a post-consumer, not, not necessarily post-consumerism, um, but sort of a post-shiny things model. And within that, you can also see that, you know, these leaders uh, obviously funded the arts in order to give themselves le legitimacy. Um, and of course, the church was right next to them, giving them the imprimatur of divinity to go with it, uh, which always helps if you're trying to get people to die for your country. Uh, you want them to die for something infinite, uh, not something shiny. Um, and or these days, black gold um, is something that people call oil. Um, and some, sometimes they call it coffee. So, you know, you can see that, you know, within, within Dresden, you can see the past and the future. Um, and the real question becomes, you know, what kind of a society do we want? Because so far you can see that the legitimacy of the leadership has not been based on, um, it's been based on essentially a form of advertising um, in alliance with religious institutions that funded uh, the arts as well as, you know, other, um, other professions. And that's why whenever you go to a museum in Europe, uh, you're bound to see, you know, a picture of, of John the Baptist everywhere or something, or, or a depiction of the crucifixion uh, or of Jesus Christ somewhere. And again, that's where the money was going. Um, and that's where you have a lack of separation between the church and the state. That's why Martin Luther is so important. 
because all that reformation, a movement away uh, from having the government align itself so closely uh, with the religious institutions, it happens right here in Germany. Uh, it happened because the man that drank that cup, who made an emblem, envisioned a society uh, that was based on probably beauty, love, and a form of an honest religion. And we haven't really met, met his standards yet, um, but at least we're, maybe if we try to study him a little bit more, uh, we might be able to understand it. But the fact that Germany itself is not advertising uh, those two items in that museum is a little bit shocking and uh, to me, but it's not surprising. Uh, it's where human history for the last 500 years, it's, it's the direction it's been going in, um, it's been heading towards. Especially when you think about the idea that if you're, you know, oh, by the way, there were hundreds of mugs, spear steins over there. And again, it, it also seems to be a situation where the leadership is uh, given a lot of amenities, a lot of um, entertainment options uh, that would allow them to be in a position where they might not be necessarily inclined uh, to think about uh, philosophical issues and welfare, which of course makes them corrupt um, over time, but not, not necessarily bad people, but and not necessarily corrupt intentionally. Um, but if you're not amongst people, uh, it's, prob it's probably quite easy to forget or not just to, or just not to see what's going on on the ground level. Um, and then of course, when things get out of hand, you can see why governments have relied on the military uh, or the local police force in order to uh, maintain their power.